Thank you for staying on News Desk with me, Francisca Kakrafos. Let's go back to the doctor's strike. And as we earlier said, the presidential staffer, Stan Dugbe, has published what he describes as details of the strike in doctors' demands on government. In a post on Facebook, Stan indicated that uh, the demands by the doctors goes way beyond what they have asked for. According to him, the GMA wants, among other things, 20% of basic uh, salaries on call duty facil uh, facilitation, 40% of the same for accommodation allowance, 80 gallons of fuel per month for senior house officers. They also want 50% of their basic salary as professional allowance and a fully paid postgraduate medical education and there's more. Well, how true are these demands? Let's uh, hear from the doctors themselves. Joining us on the line is Dr. Justice Youngson. He's the Deputy General Secretary of the GMA. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Doc. Apologies there. Let's hear the interview now. When people like him try to do what he's doing, some of us feel very, very sad for him as a person. We all know him. We don't want to say much. See, when we talk about consultants, let me just give you an example. Maybe that will paint a better picture. We are talking about people the structure of, say, Professor Frempong Watson. These are people who are very renowned persons, whose expertise are well sought after all over the world. They have sacrificed for Mother Ghana. They have worked very hard and have obtained their positions as we speak based on hard work and excellence, not political patronage like he can do is enjoying now. And he wants to tell us that he has probably contributed more because of political patronage and deserves better than people like Professor Fintor How many gallons of fuel does he use from the castle or from the last house for his social activities alone? And you think that somebody, the statue of Fintor Bradford, Professor, should use 20 gallons a week, a month for his activities when they come to work, not even for social events. He thinks that what he has put on his Facebook page or whatever is what should be for doctors. Let me ask him, did he put what government proposals were on the Facebook wall? Why didn't he put it there? Two, he as a person, why didn't he put what he enjoyed from the class staff out? as a presidential aide or advisor or whatever he is on the Facebook or for people to see. I don't blame him. His siblings or relatives, who were my juniors, some of them, in school, ask him whether any of them is serving in Ghana. Okay. They are serving in the United States. So the doctors are refuting the claims by Mr. Stan Dugwe as to what exactly they want. Uh, we know that the doctors want their conditions of service. But we've been talking about the impact as well. You heard Francis Aban earlier. Let's go to the La General Hospital and speak to my colleague, Hannah Odame. Hannah, how bad is the impact of the strike where you are? Matilda, um, sorry, Kemini, um, at the La General Hospital, I came to meet a nurse who was informing the patient at the OPD about the strike so that they do not complain if there are any delays. Now, I saw just one medical officer on duty, so I asked uh, uh, the nurse in charge whether indeed he was going to work, and she said, yes, he is going to work, and he's going to be assisted by two other house officers. So as and when the house officers cannot handle a specific case, they would refer it to the medical officer, just, just one. But ideally, there should have been two or three, according to the nurse in charge. But this morning, it's just one person. He has decided to come to work. And I also surprisingly saw two officers, police officers, and they came to the hospital specifically to ask from the administrator if indeed the doctors were on strike. So after they have finished their queries, I asked them why they had come from the lab, police team, to find out. And they told me that they were asked to go around the various hospitals in the locality, in the municipality, to find out if indeed the doctors are sent from the booking room. But meanwhile, I've also been speaking to some patients, and they are not too happy. One of them, for instance, told me if she had heard about the strike, she wouldn't have come here, for instance. She would have just gone to the police hospital, where she knows she just have to pay extra and, and be attended to. The other one was also saying that she came to the hospital at 
10, at 7. Now, at this time that I'm speaking to you, she's still sitting because the queue is quite long before you go and see a doctor because it's just one person taking care of all these people who ideally should have been taken care of by a studio of two doctors. So that's the situation at the La General Hospital, the impact. There some doctors are still working, though, but uh, some patients had to uh, look for alternatives. Thank you very much, uh, our sister Hannah Odame there, mistaking me for Kemini. But let's go to the Volta region, the home municipal uh, hospital, where Kwame Asari joins us with the very latest from there. Kwame, uh, tell us about the impact of the strike in Ho. Yeah, uh, the impact of the strike in Ho is not that effective. I should say that doctors are... At two, and then they are carrying out their normal duties. I spoke to one doctor who uh, indicated that even though they are to, uh, they are withholding uh, services at the OPD department, and then he indicated that or he added that uh, the medical assistants are in charge and then taking care of their uh, patients at the OPD department. And have you managed to speak to some patients? Yeah, uh, yeah, I spoke to some patients, but then what they said was that. Uh, they are waiting and then they are willing that uh, the strike action shouldn't be that effective yet because their uh, health issues would be at risk if uh, the doctors should go on strike. Were they able to tell you if they have alternatives, if they will have to go to private hospitals which are more expensive for health care? Yeah, some of them indicated that even if uh, the strike should be intensive or should be carried out there in the Volta region, they have no other uh, place to go than to call uh, onto the private health institutions for uh, health care. So bearing that in mind, do they know that the doctors are going to intensify the strike? Uh, that they were not really clear about. Okay. But then, uh, as I indicated earlier, they are saying that in case the strike should be intensified or uh, it, it should be more effective in the Volta region than in the uh, whole municipal hospital per se, they would have no other... Uh, alternative than to uh, visit the private hospitals for uh, health care duties. Okay, thank you very much, Kwame Asari, reporting from Home Municipal Hospital in the Volta region. Earlier you heard Hannah Odamian, we've been assessing the impact of the strike. Some patients have already been turned away, but in Home, in the Volta region, it's uh, not full-blown. But uh, we'll keep our eyes on that and move to other stories. Now, 48 students from two senior high schools in the Upper West region have received 84,000 Ghana cities to support their education. The district chief executive for Lambusi Kane is warning beneficiaries of the Secondary School Improvement Project, or SEEP, to use the money for the purpose for which the project was established. Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam reports from Pina. In order to increase access to senior secondary school education in underserved districts and improve quality in low-performing senior high schools in Ghana, the government, in partnership with the Ghana Education Service, has introduced a secondary education improvement project, SEP. Pina Senior High and Holy Family Senior High Schools, located in the Lambuse Ghana district, are two of the schools benefiting from the project. Several students applied for the right to benefit from the project from the two schools. However, after a vigorous selection exercise conducted from the sea of applicants, a total of 48 students comprising 29 students from Pina Senior High School and 19 from the Holy Family Senior High Schools were approved. Headmaster of Pina Senior High School, Osman Namba, threw more light on the project. Beneficiary students are to enjoy a cash payment of 50 Ghana cities every two weeks. This amount is meant for the educational needs of the student. You can use it to purchase items such as shoes and the school bag or for regular expenditures such as transport, lunch, etc. Parents and beneficiaries are to ensure that the money is used for its intended purpose, but not on frivolous items. For them to continue enjoying the scholarship for the three-year duration period, they are to attain at least 80% school attendance in each academic term. Before he handed over the money worth 84,000 Ghana cities to the headmaster of Pina Senior High School to be given to the students, District Chief Executive for Lambu Sekani, Bon Kofi Diaka, admonished the beneficiary students to put up behaviors that will conform to the criteria of the project or else they will be eliminated. If you are indisciplined, if you engage yourself in a way that is contrary to the criteria, don't be surprised that your name will be eliminated. 
Let me also use the opportunity to tell you that this project is not only for senior high. We have done it across the district for the basic education. So use it and use it very well. Two of the beneficiary students, Malusu and Chrysanthus and Maboba Christiana, thank the government for instituting the project. We are eight and I was alone here. My father too is a, a farmer. He farmed at Atelubu. Even when I was about to come to school, it's my uncle who paid my fees. But now my uncle is no more. But when I went to my father, even how to get me the Lord Frey from Atelubu to here, it was a difficult thing for him. Through this program, I know my challenges were so, and I thank God for that. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam, Pina. Well, that's it for News Desk on Joy News on Multi TV with me, Francisca Kakra Forsen. But coming up on Joy News today at midday, some veterans are picketing at Parliament over the unpaid pensions. Stay with us, we'll bring you more. <laughs>